Hello everyone, welcome back to Attractive. In our first episode, I explored the first cybersecurity principle, the defense in depth. Today, I want to talk about the next critical piece of the puzzle, the principle of least privilege. You know, 70% of data breaches start with privilege access abuse. The principle of least privilege, it's not just a strategy, it's your organization lifeline. So what is the least privilege? The least privilege, it's a strategy that limits the access to resources to only what is needed to perform. It's a key aspect of information security that is helped to protect sensitive data and reduce the risk of security breaches. So now, Let's break down into a practical and implementable solutions. So we have four principles of least privilege. The first one is only. So let's take an example here. We have two users. The first user gets the access right and the other users, because he doesn't have a business need, I'm not going to give him the access. So one important thing here. Even for these two users, the access is granted for a specific time and I'm not going to give them the access right in perpetuity. That's why you have to constantly going back and making sure that they still need that access and that capability. If they don't, just remove their access, you know? The second notion of least privilege is hardening the system. So let's take an example. Here we have a web server and the web server default configuration runs on HTTP, of course, because we need that in order to do web traffic. Now let's assume that it also turns on an FTP server and an SSH service to be able to log in remotely. So what I might say here, do I really need this FTP server? If not, I should remove that service entirely. Same for the SSH. If the user is not planning to use it, you have to remove it entirely. The reason why, it's because every single one of these services is expanding the attack surface for the hackers and making your company more vulnerable. One thing that is very important of hardening a system. So the important things is also to remove all the unnecessary IDs on the systems and change the name of the IDs from their default name. If the administrator ID on the system is configured by default admin, you have to change it and also change all the default password. I'm still seeing companies that are keeping the same default password and IDs. You know, the hacker will know and he will know how to break in. So now let's talk about the third notion of least privilege, the privilege creep. So let me explain. Here we have two employees that work for your company and which one of these employees are access rights. So both employees have the same capabilities and perform essentially the same role. Let's say after a couple months, the first employee got a promotion. So he got this new role and new responsibilities in your company. So now you have to add new capabilities on his access because of his new position. So the administrator, he's just saying, oh, you know what? Just in case, he's probably going to need this access for this application or he's going to go and give access for three or four application because he's saying that, oh, I'm going to give the access now so he won't have to come back and ask me again, you know, but this is a problem because the problem for just in case is the opposite of principle of least privilege. In fact, what you should be doing is running a, certi a recertification campaign. So both least privilege and recertifications are the most important components of your organization's cybersecurity and risk management framework. So in research, 
we go back and look all of the users and their access, right? And we make sure that they still have a justify need. So here, what we're trying to do with the principle of least privilege is to give only the access rights you need for as long as the users need them, all right? So now, what I wanna talk here is some ways that you can implement the principle of least privilege. So what you can do here, you can define a user or system roles based on responsibilities, functions. You can define the role for users and also the systems. You can use an access control list. Specify what resources each user or role can access and what action they can perform on those resources. You can also, also assign permissions and privileges. Assign permissions and privilege to users or roles within the access control list. And of course, regularly, you have to audit and monitor. So you can regularly audit permission to ensure that the principle of least privilege is uh, well implemented. So if you are struggling with least privilege implementation, just drop a comment below or send us a message and we can break down a complex access control framework and help you to create a comprehensive security approach. Thank you for watching us. See you for the next episode.